Hey guys, welcome to part 5 of the Swift and Firebase tutorials. In this video, I just want to make it so that we can actually add uh, posts to this list here and replace this mock data with real data from Firebase. So all I've changed since then is I moved the logout button to the left side and I've added this plus button in the top right corner. So if we click that, we get a uh, view, kind of like a tweet composer or something in Twitter, and it lets us uh, write a post. And if we click it, then nothing happens right now, but we want it to actually write and save to our Firebase database here. So uh, I've called this class the new post view controller, and let's go there and add some code. First thing you want to make sure you do is have uh, Firebase imported. I've already done that. And let's create a reference to this post. So let's say post ref equal database database reference child path will be posts all the posts will be saved under posts and then we want to say child by auto ID so that's going to assign this post a unique identifier that we can reference it by then let's say post ref uh, set value and I want to do value with completion block uh, we'll put nil for value for the moment and just say error uh, ref in in and if error equals nil then we can go ahead and dismiss this view because we know everything went fine. Sorry, dismiss true nil. And otherwise, uh, we probably have an error, so we want to handle that error with like a pop up or something. So instead of nil, let's actually define our value and say let post object equal, uh, let's do text, equal the text view text. So that's going to be this actual content. They write a post here, the text of our text view. <laughs> and then let's do a timestamp. And that will be um, a server value. So we actually do dot SV colon timestamp. So this isn't a value that's defined on the client side of the, uh, the user's iPhone or something, but it will be defined uh, in Firebase. We're just telling Firebase, hey, fill this in with your server value for the current time. And it's going to complain here because it wants us to cast this as a string to any before we can set it to Firebase. Uh, so do do do. Let's put that there. Hopefully that error goes away, and we can run this. Okay, let's try and add a post now. So we'll say, uh, "Hello, this is our first post." And okay, it dismissed, so it looks good. We've got a new post under posts. It says everything that we wanted to. You'll notice that the timestamp here is a uh, Unix timecode value, timestamp value. So we'll need to convert that to a date on the client side, but that's good. So what this is missing is obviously uh, the user, the author of this post. We're going to need that information for sure. And in order to get that, we, we're going to want to populate it with this username and photo URL of whoever is currently logged in. So what I'm going to do, um, I've already added a object called user profile to our models folder. So you might want to copy this over. And this represents the data here found in the user's profile object. So we've got a UID, which is this key, a username, Commander Shepard, and a photo URL, uh, this Firebase URL right here. So we've got this model to represent our user profile, but now we need to fetch it somehow. So I've added another class called user service. It's got nothing in it right now, but I'm going to add a static function called uh, static func observe user profile. And I'll say uh, UID string and completion. So this function is going to return a user profile uh, of a given UID. So let's say user profile. It's going to have an object type of user profile. It's going to be optional because we don't know if this user necessarily exists in the database. And then I'll create a reference called user ref equal uh, database, database, uh, database, reference, child. And the path is going to be users, profile, and then this UID here that we're passing in. So now we can say user ref observe event type value snapshot in and I'll create a value called user profile user profile optional and let's say if let dict equals snapshot value as 
string any. So as a string, if we uh, cast this snapshot as a dictionary of string to any. Okay. And then now we can actually parse out our values. So we want to just capture the username and the photo URL as strings. So let's say let username equal dict username as string. And let uh, photo URL equal dict photo URL as string as well. OK, let's just spell that right. And then we also just want to get this, uh, we want to get the actual URL object from the photo URL string, right? Because it's a string and we need to convert it to a URL. Okay, so that's everything we need to um, satisfy this um, user profile init function. So let's say uh, that the user profile will be equal to user profile, uh, sorry about that, user profile. Uh, the UID of the user profile will be snapshot key. The username will be the username. Photo URL will be URL. Okay. Now outside of the if statement, we can say completion and pass this user profile object that we've defined. And because this is optional, if anything went wrong in this if statement, like the username or the photo URL wasn't defined, then this um, user profile would be nil and we wouldn't get one out. So that's why these need to be optional here. It's complaining that I didn't put escaping, so let's just fix that. And uh, that should go away, so I just need to put this escaping before completion there. Okay, cool. Uh, one more thing I wanted to add to this class was a static variable called current user profile. And that'll just be a user profile object, also optional. And that's going to contain the uh, user profile of whoever is currently logged in. Okay, so we need to define that. And the way the where we'll put that is in the app delegate in our add state did change listener. So uh, here, if our user is logged in, then let's call our class user service and say observe user profile with uh, the UID of the currently signed in user. And for the completion, we'll return our user profile in where we can set. Uh, Let's say current user profile, the statically defined current user profile will be equal to the user profile that we fetched. All right. Now, if the user is signed out, then we can just say user service uh, current user profile will equal nil. All right, it's good enough for now. So that was a bit of code, but what that lets us do is pretty awesome. In our new post view controller, we can uh, get the current user profile. So let's say guard let user profile equals the user service current user profile okay and we can put an author object so in addition to the text and the timestamp we get to say uh, author will equal an object here that contains a username which is the uh, user profile username actually probably most importantly is the UID here so we'll put user profile UID and then lastly here, we'll just say photo URL is equal to user profile photo URL, uh, absolute string. Okay, that's all good. Let's give it a run. And just missing a comma there, that's all. Let's run it. Okay, let's try to add a post. Say, hey, what is going on? Oops. Post that there, and let's check our data. We've got a new post, text, write text, and there it is. All the information of um, you know our user profile is now filled in here with the author. Now, this type of uh, storing data this way, where basically the whole profile is being copied um, into the post object here, that's called denormalizing data. So this is a denormalized type of data. It's not the post object doesn't have like a, an ID reference necessarily to the user profile. We've actually just copied all of this data over into this object. And this is pretty much the the ideal way, the best way you want to you want to handle your data in a JSON, you know, no SQL format that we have in Firebase. Um, it has its drawbacks, but it definitely has its advantages in the fact that when you read this post data, um, you've got it all. You know, you don't need to do any other fetches. You don't the database doesn't need to perform any population or anything. You've got the full data uh, ready for the user to read. 
So uh, that's you know one advantage, I guess, of a NoSQL database like Firebase. Okay, so we're ready now to read this list of posts uh, in the home view controller. So let's do that next. Uh, I'll remove this post here because it's not following the schematic that we have for the author and the photo URL. So let's just take this out. And now we've got one post in our list of posts. So by going back, let's go to the home view controller and we can replace our array, our mock data, and just replace it with a empty array of posts. And then let's create a function called observe uh, posts. A reference called posts ref equal database. Database reference. And let's put the child to be posts. And then we can say post ref um, observe value snapshot in. Now this snapshot isn't just going to be one object. Uh, it's going to be a whole list of posts, right? So there could be, there's just one right now, but there could be many posts in this object post. So we need to iterate over it by saying for child in snapshot children. And then let's uh, cast it as if let child snapshot equal child as data snapshot. And then let's say let dict equal child snapshot uh, as a string to any dictionary. Okay, now we have our dictionary of this post value here, and we're going to need to parse out all this information. So we've already parsed out the author before, so let's just copy that bit of code. This one right here. Just get username and everything. Let's put that there. And it's not going to be referencing this dict necessarily. We need to actually uh, get an author object first. So let's say let author equal dict author as another object of string to any. Okay. So now we're going to get the username and the photo URL from this author object instead. And there's one more that we we're missing, and that's the UID value. And then lastly, we just need to get this text and this timestamp. So we got right down here at the bottom, we can say let text equal uh, dict text as string and let timestamp equal dict, uh, sorry, timestamp as double. Okay, so that's this value here as a double. Now that's a whole bunch of stuff, but we should have all the data we need for our post. So let's say let post equal post. And we need to update our post model actually, because right now it's just expecting a string for the author. But we want it to actually take in a user profile. And pop that there. Okay. So now let's say user profile first instead. User profile. We'll take in the UID, the username, and the uh, URL. Now we can put our URL for the author. The ID can be the snapshot or the child snapshot key, and the text will be the text. Oh, we're also missing the timestamp value, so let's say timestamp will be uh, double for now. We're not going to use this timestamp just yet. I'm gonna I'm gonna do that in another video for sure. Just because there's a few more things that we'll have to do uh, to get that working. Okay, let's just uh, fix some typing errors there. That should all be good. Let's just add timestamp here. Okay. Um, so now we have our post. Awesome. In here I'm going to say, I'm going to create a variable called uh, temp posts and that's going to be equal to a temporary array of posts and down here at the bottom is going to say uh, temp posts append post okay so we're going to start with an empty array a temporary array and over that array we're going to append each object each post object okay and then we will do doo -doo -doo -doo. You know what, this is complaining, and that's actually good that it reminded us because we need to put value 
uh, beside child snapshot. Otherwise, this definitely would not have worked. Okay, now, after this loop has run, we can say self posts equal our temporary list of posts. And then let's do self table view reload data. Okay. And since we've changed our post model, we're also going to need to change uh, the way that the cell is reading that data. So let's jump into our post table view cell and just update that. So instead, uh, the post author, we got to go post author username. Okay. And let's give that a run. Okay. And <laughs> Like I should have expected, we're not actually observing our posts yet. So let's go ahead and put this observe post function in uh, our view did load so that we're actually observing the post. Noob mistake there. Awesome. Look at that. Our post is right here. We can go and add another one. Our second awesome post. And there it is. It's popping up at the bottom. What? Uh, which probably, depending on whatever app you're making, you probably want them to come in at the top. So um, we can do that later on. We, there's a few ways that we could order it. We could order it by the timestamp. We could order it um, uh, in our query for to Firebase here. Um, but again, those are all some changes that we will make in the future because uh, you know this might be the preferred or preferred order that you want them to appear. But most likely, if for some kind of Twitter feed or whatever, we're going to want the most recent posts coming in at the top. Um, all right, so we'll make those changes in another video. Um, and also, I really want to get these images working because these placeholders are getting kind of annoying. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll do that another time. All right, thanks for watching, guys.